Hello everyone, in this video I will introduce kinematics in the form of the Suvat equations and show you where they come from. If we consider a particle that starts at a speed u and increases in speed over a time of t seconds and ends up at a speed of v, you can see that this is represented by this velocity time graph here. Now from your work on straight lines you should be able to tell me that the gradient of a straight line is equal to the difference delta of the y values divided by the difference of the x values. Now if we apply this to our current situation we can see that the gradient is equal to the difference but not in the y values of the v velocity values divided by the difference in and again not the x values the t values and we give this a special name and what we call this is acceleration for which we give the symbol A. Now just back to this first statement up here. If we multiply by delta x, you can see that the gradient times delta x is equal to delta y. It's just rearranging this equation here. Now if we apply the same logic to what we did to this statement to this one, we can see that we end up with the gradient, which is now acceleration times by the difference in the x values, but the x values are now the t values, and that's equal to the difference not in the y values but in the v values. Okay, and if we consider between 0 and t here, we should be able to see that a t is equal to the difference in the v values, which is v minus u. And if we take this minus u across, we should see that we end up with the first of our Suva equations, V, is equal to U plus A T. The one right here. Now, the area under a curve, or a straight line, is represented by the product of the two values on the axis, i.e. VT is equal to area under the curve, or the line. Now this looks quite familiar to me, and if we use the speed equals distance divided by time formula, we can see that v speed is equal to distance d divided by time. If we multiply this t across, we end up with v t equals d. But v t is the area under the curve. We should be able to see that the area under the curve represents the distance travelled between these two times. Now, we don't use the symbol D in SUVAT, we use the symbol S for distance, because it represents displacement. So, S is equal to the area under the line or the curve. Now, if we look at our graph, we should be able to see that we can split this out into a rectangle and into a triangle. And the area of both of these shapes, 1 and 2, is the same as the area under the line between these two time values. So the area of a rectangle is just base times height. The base in this is t, and the height is u. That's just equal to ut. And of a triangle, it's half base times height. And again, the base is t. The height of the triangle is this v value minus this u value. So if we write this out, we end up with equal to the area of the rectangle, which again is ut, plus the area of the triangle, which is one half, times the height, which was v minus u, times the base, which was t. Okay, now if you look over here to the top right, you can see that v minus u is equal to at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this at value into this equation for v minus u. So we end up with s is equal to ut plus one half instead of v minus u, at times by t. So we end up with s is equal to ut plus one half of a t times by t is just t squared. And this is our second of the four Suvat equations. If we instead consider this 
not as a rectangle and a triangle, but as a trapezium. See outlined in the purple there. That has two parallel sides, four sides altogether. The area of a trapezium is equal to the sum of the parallel sides, if they have lengths a and b, divided by two times h, which is the distance between these two sides. So again, I'm going to apply this to our current situation. So we can see that s is equal to a plus b. Well, a in this case is u, and b in this case is v. So we end up with u plus v over 2 times h. Now h is the distance between these two values. So you should, should be able to see that that is t. And this is our third Suvat equation. Now if we start with equation 1, which was v is equal to u plus at, and rearrange this for t, we can see that v minus u is equal to at, just taking the u across. And now if I divide by a, we end up with t is equal to v, sorry, v minus u, let me start that again, v minus u divided by a. Now if I substitute this value for t into this in equation 3, this is what we get. We get s is equal to u plus v over 2 times by t, but t is now v minus u over a. Now I'm going to take the 2a across, so we end up with 2as is equal to u plus v times by v minus u. If we multiply this out, we end up with doing uv minus u squared plus v squared minus uv. We've got a plus uv here and a minus uv here, so they cancel out. I'm going to take this minus u squared over the other side of the equals. So we get 2as plus u squared is equal to v squared, or in the common form, v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. That is equation 4 out of 4 of our Suvat equations. Thank you for watching the video. I'll see you next time.